Welcome, thank you for joining me today. We're going to pull apart a file that is a little bit rare. It's not something that the end users normally play with. It's a CPL file. You see them all the time in control panel, but do you know what they do? Did you know they can carry malware? They can actually be the full malware. So let's have a look at this file. Stick with me. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and we will pull apart malware. So first of all, let's define what we're talking about here. We're talking about a Windows control panel item. These are utilities that allow users to view and adjust computer settings. Things like display, sound, mouse, keyboard, that kind of thing. Control panel items are registered executables or control panel items. So that means they can be an XE file or a CPL file. Now, if they are a CPL file, they're actually a DLL that has had a special CPL applet function added to them. Control panel items can be executed directly from the command line. You can double click on them or they can be started programmatically via an application or an API call or simply, you know, someone's not watching what they're doing and they run that file some other way. For ease of use, control panel items generally include graphical menus available to users after being registered and loaded into the control panel. Unless, of course, they're a virus and the whole purpose is not to be in the control panel but take over your machine. Nasty people out there can use control panel items to execute payloads to do all sorts of arbitrary commands. Malicious control panel items can be delivered via your email. Um, you could receive it in many different ways, but generally email, and they're normally part of a multi-stage malware. So they're the downloader that download more things yet to come. Now, normally they get through application and file extension whitelisting. They're not something we normally look to block. So let's have a look at one, shall we? So here's one that I received in an email, resume charlotteharris.cpl. In the way that it arrived, I had extensions turned off, and this was in a zip file. So when I used the Windows unzipping tool, not WinRAR or something like that, the extension's actually hidden, and all I saw were the words resume Charlotte Harris, which obviously people are gonna click on. The .cpl gets hidden. So let's have a look at the CPL file. Firstly, let's pump it up through VirusTotal and see what VirusTotal's got to tell us. Here we go, VirusTotal has quite a story to tell, especially when I see here Trojan Ransom Grand Crab. So this is either the Grand Crab ransomware or the downloader for it. The more I look around, we got all sorts of we got encoder, we got all kinds of words here that kind of indicate this could actually be the grand crap. Go into details. Is there anything else there to worry about? Uh, another name. So here we go. This is interesting. So as I said, a CPL file is basically an XE file, or it's a, a DLL that's had special code added to it, and it becomes a CPL file. Very unusual to see in an XE file or a DLL code, data, and BSS. It's normally .bss, .data, .code. So this PE header is a little bit unusual. What else have we got here? The community's been quite active. They've come back with a number of IP addresses that it contacts. We've got all kinds of reports here. We can click on and go through. And these descriptions will be um, in the description underneath this video. I'll put all the links there. Hmm, quite a few things here. Right, let's chuck this thing up to hybrid analysis. So here we are on hybrid analysis, associated URLs. It's already got one there. Okay, so this thing's going to take you up to a dangerous URL. Let's have a look at this in here okay so we detected it as malicious yep that's pretty obvious um pretty high detection rate we've got an ip address it tries to go to which is the loopback address uh suspicious apis it's using so it's writing files it's finding files uh it's looping through files by the look of it it's trying to get file sizes 
It's closing files, it's opening registries. Hmm, this is doing quite a bit. It's also going to sleep for a period of time, creating processes. It's actually quite common for ransomware to open a file, sleep the system, so it doesn't go to another file just yet, loop through that file or that folder, encrypt everything, unsleep and away it goes. Also, the sleep feature is quite often used to place the little ransom notes in the folders. So seeing sleep as part of a ransomware file is quite common. Here we go. PE header has unusual section name, code, data, and BSS. So this has also pointed out the fact that they're a bit unusual. It's also said that the type is a DLL, um, but it's not happy with that. Okay. It's not happy that it's calling it a DLL. I think that's because it's not quite got the right header for an XE or a DLL. Um, the raw size of BSS is zero. That's normally the area used for constants and things like that in programming. Very unusual to be zero. It was created with Delphi by the look of it. Okay, ball on Delphi. There doesn't appear to be anything else of real consequence here. Um, we've got some screenshots. It doesn't do anything on the screen. DNS is quite quiet here. And there's only the loopback addresses that are hit. So I think the next thing to do is to take one of those descriptions and Google it, which I did. And that's where I get the semantics description of ransomware grand crab. Tells you all about it. Tells you how it executes. Tells you what files it avoids. Tells you the uh, little text file it drops behind to say you've been ransomed. And etc, etc, etc. So again, this will be in the description for you to look at later. So my next step is going to be loading this up in CFF Explorer. Open. And here we go, we got the file open. It's an executable 32. It was written in Ball and Delphi. We know that from the hybrid analysis anyway. Um, nothing else there looks unusual. DOS header, you got your magic byte, which is, this is MZ. So this, sorry, yeah, MZ. Um, what else have you got? Not a lot of unusual things here at this point. This here gives you the memory address for the next bit to load. Uh, NT headers, file header. Here's the characteristic section. Now, remember how before I said that it's unusual because it's not quite a DLL, not quite an executable? Let's click here and find out what it is. It says it's a DLL. So here we go, DLL file, optional header. A few more bits of information about it. Uh, data directory, section headers. We can see what it exports, we can see what it imports. So it uses functions from all of these built-in DLL files. We can go through the resources directories and the strings. Memory relocations. Hmm, dependency walker. This really uses these files a lot. Um, yeah, so we can really get into this. So other than stepping through everything here, the next thing I'm going to do is fire this up in Ghidra. I've already preloaded it, so let's open this up. Open with Code Browser. This episode brought to you by the Virus Doctor. Yes, I pull them apart, but he helps you get rid of them. We're going to do all the standard analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go in and search for strings. And I'm going to try and find uh, any text strings in this particular CPL file. First thing I noted is there are no strings. I noticed during the analysis that it actually aborted the string search. It found an error with the file that it couldn't quite work out what the text was in it. So having known this, I can now go to analysis, do one shot ASCII strings and tell Ghidra that don't worry about the rest of the analysis, I just want to search for ASCII strings. The error I saw seemed to have been uh, in one of the other analysis tools, 
and it caused a stumble and then the rest of the analysis didn't occur. So now that I've done that, if we go to search for strings now, there we go, we have strings. So this could be something that the executable or the CPL file has in it to try and stop decompilation. But because Ghidra allows me to do one-off analysis of different types, I've managed to get around the problem. So I can confirm almost immediately, yep, Delphi, it was written in Delphi. I can also see it's getting long path names. I can see that it's checking the time of the day, probably to do with the encryption. It's looking for free disk space. It's got a whole heap of unusually named variables. Okay, actually there's quite a lot of uh, strings in this. I can see that loopback IP address there that it's trying to hit. That might well very well be to try and figure out what other computers are on the network so we can encrypt those as well. In fact, there's quite a lot of stuff in here to do with uh, IP addressing. You've got local host, you've got HTTPS. Obviously, this is just strings, so it's out of context here. But the more I look at it, I can see socket tests, I can see port numbers. Um, again, we've got something here trying to do a socket test and it's got a failure error report. So obviously it allows for errors to occur. It's done another loop back there. It's looking through file numbers. So it's playing with the file system. I can see that much just from this. And then there's a whole heap of other errors here. Obviously error codes for various things that could go wrong. And then we've got, uh, looks like a HTTP header. So this is probably a HTTP GET request. You might download something from the internet, or maybe this is where it uploads the cipher keys for the ransomware. The more I scroll through it, the more I'm seeing some random stuff. There's a read.txt. I'm assuming that's going to be the ransom note. There's a lot to look through, and we're not going to look through it all here today. Okay. So again, going up to the headers, um, we can see it has the magic uh, byte of MZ. So we know that this thing is pretending to be at least an executable. Uh, if we go down to image NT, expand that out, we can see it's a PE header. And if we expand out anything below it and go into characteristics, that's where we can see it's that strange hybrid DLL executable. Bit odd. Code is not a normal segment name. So that's a bit unusual in itself. So it's data and BSS. But they're there, so we'll live with that. Uh, under the exports, you can see the number of stuff that gets exported and imported. And then you've got functions, of which there are a lot of functions. So I'm just going to expand this area to show a bit more of the functions. So the first thing I notice is there are a lot of functions. I'm not going to work my way through this. There's just so many functions. I don't have the time for it. So I'm just going to pick a function. Here's one here. And I'm going to go to the graphing feature just to see what it looks like in amongst all the other functions. We'll just wait for that to draw up. And it's coming, I promise you. Wow. Look at this. So obviously I can move around down here, but that's the function tree, so small. So if we zoom in on the function tree, we can start to see how, oops, I've just dragged something out of the way there, don't worry about it. Um, but as we zoom in, we can see the assembly code. And as each function joins to the next, so that humongous tree that you saw, that's just the links to that one function. Look at that. It's ginormous. Obviously, it's a very complicated um, algorithm it uses to compress and encrypt and get the cipher for your files. Uh, two things, it makes it more difficult for people to reverse it, which I'm going to have a lot of trouble doing. And also, it makes for superior... Uh, encryption but I'm impressed that is a very 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 big big function tree that is huge look at that 
That is massive. Well, speaking of that, let's go and have a look at the function tree. Okay, so here we go. We've got the function, and it calls 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 the function. Oh my goodness. Look how it goes, and it just keeps going and going and going. So here's the CPL applet functions, which make it appear like a CPL file. And these are the functions of the actual code, the code that's encrypting away and doing everything. And this is just a, a nested mess of functions. I think it was written this way deliberately to obfuscate it so people can't easily pull it apart. So over here, we've got the function I've clicked on, we've got the assembly, and we've got the decompilation. Yeah, good luck with that. That's, uh, that's a nightmare to pull that apart. So whoever cracks Grand Crab, um, yeah, I think I owe them a, a meal, take them out for the night because they mustn't have much to do. It's uh, pretty seriously... Uh, messed up piece of code but anyway you can now see that a cpl file or a control panel file is merely just an executable or a dll or a special dll that's got some cpl um, application to it and uh, really if they get them in their email people shouldn't be clicking them so now you've seen what's inside a cpl file thanks for sticking through this one um, it's a little bit weird because i didn't end up with any resolution except to show you what a cpl file looks like and that I've got a virus here, it's Grand Crab, and that I can pull it apart and how I did that. Right, so until next time, thank you very much.